So just got back from uh, frame building. How was it? It was such a cool experience. It was a yeah. lot of fun. It's like tying together my love for cycling, my like keen interest for tools and building stuff. And like, I just have this thing where I love to learn no matter what it is. Yeah. Tie it all together and then bam, voila, like I'm left with a bike frame. It's pretty sweet. Like I kind of following it along in Instagram and I was like, damn, that looks so cool. I, I just want to do that. And then, yeah, I realized that I'd have to go out there for like a month. But like it's actually only 11 days for the frame. Oh, okay. I went out for a month because I wanted to and I stretched it out. Yeah. Uh, but because like Dave, the instructor was really nice and let me do that. But the the course is actually only 11 days long. And if you choose to do the carbon frame course, it's even shorter. Oh. Yeah. So anybody can do it. It's like super accessible. And it what's really cool is that no matter which course you choose, there there's always one other student. So that's cool because you have one other person to kind of like learn from and hang out with and chat with. But yeah. at the same time, like the teacher isn't overwhelmed. So he has enough bandwidth to spend with like time with everybody well, each person. And that's, it's like the perfect balance. That's super cool. Like that, that's the one thing that kind of struck me about that, that school that seemed really interesting was just the opening up and kind of like demystifying building a bike really. I mean, whenever you got started, we're like, where, where do you even get started building a frame? Like what was, what was the, like the initial process? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people go in with this uh, pretty solid idea of the exact bike that they want to build. And a lot yeah. of people are like custom bike enthusiasts and steel bike connoisseurs and stuff. And me, like, I, I don't know much about this at all. I just know how to ride bikes and I, do, I know that I love bikes. But uh, other than that, I don't know very much. And I don't have much taste in like retro bikes or custom bikes just because okay. I've never explored that area very much. So I went in with that kind of background whereas my classmate Nathan like he he loves bikes and like he knew exactly what type of bike he wanted to make and like what's cool and like what's not cool like according to his taste so that was pretty cool so I learned a lot from Dave the instructor and from Nathan and I I actually decided after the first two days what type of frame I wanted to build did he like present you with like frame geometry because that's like one thing i'm i'm finally getting to a point where i'm like grasping the concept of like frame geometry like kind of understanding exactly what i i like and what i don't like so do they like give you a few options of like this is like a, a little bit racier a little bit more aggressive feel not racier i guess race yeah yeah racier yeah it's racier yeah. <laughs> <laughs> words you know they're, they're difficult sometimes or like, you know, really like kind of slack geometry for like more touring. Or... Yeah. So the first day, well, actually almost the first two days are totally theory based. So we're sitting in the classroom, okay. he's at his whiteboard and, and presenting us a bunch of like concepts and, and theory. And we first begin with geometry. So we learn like what rake is and like how a different rake will affect how a bike handles, why different bikes need different geometries. For example, I ended up choosing to build a randonneur bike because I thought wouldn't it be so cool to build your own bike and then do an epic adventure on the bike that you built with your very own hands oh yeah so like a randonneur bike oftentimes there's a front rack and the yeah. um, when you make a bike that's designed to carry load on the very front you have to always ride the bike with uh, weight on the front otherwise like the bike's gonna get like oh. all and sketchy because of the the angle of the, oh. the fork of the head tube so I that's it's kind of i guess it's kind of like like one of those like uh big uh like like the bigger dump trucks if you if you like drive them without anything in the back they handle like garbage but like whenever they're loaded down apparently it's like actually pretty nice to drive oh that makes yeah see that makes a yeah. lot of sense that yeah. makes a lot of sense yeah so it's the it's the tr like my bike the randonneur bike has like a really short trail so the trail is like the difference between the head tube angle and the fork angle. If I put it like very like in layman's terms, like it's easier yeah. to describe when I draw it out. But whereas like on a, a bike that doesn't carry any weight on the front, you want a longer trail. Yeah. So anyways, the whole, that's what we learn first. We learn about geometry and where we use computer assistant design programs to yeah. draw our bike frames. And there are two programs that he uses. I use one called Rattlecad. Yeah. And you can, it's open source. You can use it for free, which is really cool. And then we get to design like the geometry of our bike. So, That's I mean, cool. yeah. 
and and Dave Bohm, he's an expert. He knows like which numbers like make sense and which ones don't make sense, like which ranges are okay and which yeah. ones are just gonna handle like absolute dirt. <laughs> It'll be super rewarding whenever you get it all together and like go for your first adventure on it and you're like, oh, I, I, I built this. Wait. Whenever you were kind of putting everything together, did you have options like like I saw you you had some kind of like intricate kind of details in your lug set up. Is that standard or is that something that you wanted to do with like the anchors and, and things like that? Yeah. So there were tons of options actually. Like for example, I chose to make a fork that didn't have a bend in it. Whereas my classmate, Nathan, he decided that he wanted a fork with a bend in it. I did that partly for geometry reasons. I think he did it partly for that, but also for the look, the style that he wanted to create. He yeah. chose to make a bike with lugs. Whereas I chose to make a bike uh, that was fill totally fillet braised. Okay. So I used bronze to braise my tubes together, whereas he used silver to braise his like lugs and his tubes together. Okay. Kind of cool because I got to witness that like technique and then I got to do my own. And so those were some options. Like I did uh, on social media to choose between the two fork crowns that I yeah. picked out for myself. So Dave's got these drawers of stuff like lugs <laughs> and fork crowns and just like different tubes and stuff. And you can pick from them and like he'll guide you through it. Like he'll suggest different uh, options to you. But that's it's so cool to like pick and choose every single little part of the bike. Like even the dropouts in the fork and then the rear triangle. Like you get to choose their different styles. Like for the seat stays connect onto the seat tube, for example, you get to choose like how you want that to look like you can make them like the tips of the seat stays curve around like I did, yeah. or you can make them like more flat or you can make it actually there. There are like single pieces that you can use that will just like plug on the ends. So and then wow. this, the seat collar is where I made an anchor right here. And this okay. thing like all afternoon to saw out like i sawed it out by using <laughs> the jeweler saw yeah i think it's the part on this frame that i'm the most proud of and it's like one of the things that really makes this bike super special to me and i, I gotta tell you why like my grandfather he was he was pretty much a machinist this guy like could build anything and he built That's some cool. really amazing things all with his like all with his own hands he has like a garage that yeah has an industrial sized door on it like seriously an 18 wheeler could drive into this thing and he has everything in there oh damn that's not messing around no it's so cool and as a child <laughs> i'd go in i'd just be like oh, this place is awesome and i still return to visit my grandmother and i i still think the same thing and he passed away 10 years ago but like he he's like definitely one of the people in my life who i had always admired like so so much so yeah. learning how to work with metal and build this frame really made me think of him like a lot and some of the tools i was using and some of the smells i was smelling even like really brought back memories from my childhood the, and, uh, the machinist oil yeah and the yeah. dye so like this blue fluid that you use for like yeah. fluid that you use for like marking where to cut tubes and stuff like the smell of that isn't that crazy that is cool i mean yeah it, that's super like I guess, I don't know, it's like, it's super cool that, like, you can kind of immortalize or, like, tribute to him within your frame, you know, yeah. 10, 20 years later, like, even, you know, that's, that'll be cool. And it's, you know, steel, so it's going to last a while. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm told, and it better, but yeah. And he, <laughs> well, he was always, like, he's super into sailing, and my grandmother, too, so my grandparents, that was their dream to go sail the Caribbean on their own boat. So they sailed from near Detroit, Michigan, all the way to the Caribbean. And they were there for seven years, like going amongst the islands and stuff. Like it's a big deal. And That's my grandpa awesome. made a lot of parts for his boat and stuff. So the anchor on there is like a tribute to him. Okay. And it was actually, they had a couple of boats and their, their boat that they went to the Caribbean on was St. Pauli the second. And they had the first before that, like a 34 foot sailor boat. Like they did all this adventure on it. So it's not a huge boat, but it's still like yeah. big. So I decided um, I'm going to name this frame, well, a bike, St. Pauli the Three, because I haven't learned how to sail yet, but I figure I do know how to do adventures on bikes. So for now, this is going to be my St. Pauli. And yeah, that's where that's the cool. anchor story comes from. Yeah, that, no, that's super cool, though. So do you, what What are the plans for like the painting it or are you going to leave it like in the raw or? No, I, 
Well, you can't really leave it in the raw because that would like make it prone to rust and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I will have it painted. So I'm still looking for parts. So I'm still trying to figure out like how I'm going to get that done. And then I'll send it off to a painter and I have like a like paint concept in mind and stuff. So I want it, to, well, be the same colors as a sailboat. And then I have to yeah. look accessories too. So like accessories in the sense like, like uh, little racks for my luggage when I go and do my adventure. And then maybe some bags too. And you can see too, I got to decide to drill like holes, like water water bottle bosses so i put them on the down tube yeah here. and then i put one up. <laughs> dave wasn't like super keen on my idea to put I know, it i love i saw here. the top tube one i was like hell yeah that's that's i mean the top tube that's super key for like adventure biking i think so well because so i have that on my bmc earth gravel bike yeah and i before i actually had the bento box that actually like screws into the bosses i yeah. used one that goes on with like velcro and like after my first ride flipping <laughs> paint was like super scratch and i was so sad i was like what the heck yeah you shouldn't even make these things so i was I like did the, i did the same thing i feel yeah it's like yeah. you get done you're like i just bought this come on yeah and like yeah. i was excited to use the bag too and i was like this thing is useless so, <laughs> so those are there that's super cool not bad yeah you can also mount a gopro to oh. like one of the like I forget. I'll I'll see if I can send you the the mount that I used at one point. But it, it's a pretty nice angle because it's you know it's kind of off to the side, so like you can see the wheel turning and you can kind of like see your handlebars turning, and it's just unique for like really kind of long distance time lapses. But I'll, oh, I'll see if I can find the mount, send it to you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I should keep but, that uh, in for my graveling adventures and my randonneuring adventures next year. <laughs> oh yeah. So do you do you have any ideas of like what what kind of mechanical setup you want to go with or electronic or that kind of will depend on what's available right now and then like for the bottom bracket though and the crank set i'm gonna i'm not gonna have a ton of options because i did make it like with like the english bottom bracket size what is that i don't know bsa 68 probably yeah yeah you're right i don't know all those things off by heart (laughs) (laughs) so that that does actually give you a lot of options surprisingly like i don't know bottom brackets are like one of those things that like I, it's, it's a love hate, right? Cause the bike industry is non-standard whenever it comes to bottom brackets. Mm-hmm. But the cool thing is, and I recently learned this, but like BSA is BSA English is just kind of a thread type. So oh. you can find like right now I'm running a BB 30. So a 30 millimeter axle on a BSA 68 width on oh. my, on my aluminum road bike so you can find all kinds of check out wheels manufacturing they make all kinds of different options for like different variations of like bottom bracket whether it's like a 19 mil through or like a 30 mil or like a i think the shimano standards 24 okay yeah but it's it's kind of cool because like you can go to wheels and you can see what they have like ahead of time, but really you just kind of pick out your crank set and they probably have something that'll work, which is kind of nice. Oh, right. Well, thanks for that tip. You see, yeah, it's so cool. Cause like I'm on this journey where I'm learning a whole bunch of things about bikes, which is kind of cool. Like I, I mean, I know I'm okay. I'm not used to work in bike shops, like all through school and I'm, I've been racing bikes for a long time, but I yeah. certain like, because I couldn't choose my equipment, I was just like, okay, I'm accepting what's given to me. And I didn't want to geek out on the specs too much because, like, what's it worth? Like, I'm going to ride it. I'm going to figure out how to make it go as fast as I can. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's now cool that, which it, it's cool that you're like, make it, I don't know. It's like learning bikes, learning about bikes mechanically is, is one thing. But whenever you get into like actually like rebuilding or like, throwing out the the plans or whatever and just saying i'm gonna make this mine yeah. that's whenever you like you get like really like, at least for like me whenever i redid my Le Monde, i was like i want to make this exactly what i want and i have a frame and everything else i can replace or upgrade or, or do whatever and it was it was a learning experience i, I went through three different crank sets because mm-hmm. i was like oh i want this and then i'd order it and i find like Cause this was, I decided to do it right. Like right at the start of whenever bikes, like not, you couldn't find anything basically. 
And I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to order this. I found it used on like uh, Facebook marketplace or something and I'd order it and it would get here and I'd be like, shit, this is press fit. I can't uh-huh. do press fit. I don't, why isn't this working? And then I'd call <laughs> Nick cause he's pretty good mechanically too. And like, he'd be like, dude, you can't run press fit. And I was like, well, I know this now cause I put it together and there's not enough. Like it's a 68, it's still 68 millimeter, but it's a different measurement. It's 68 from the base of the crank arm to the end of the the axle okay instead of to the base of the the threads where the 68 so it's like yeah it like i read the all the specs online and i was like oh it's a 68 cool it'll fit it's press fit or it's uh it's bb30 okay i didn't know that there was pf bb30 yeah and then there's bb30 and then there's yeah it it it's like it's like a rabbit hole that no one should ever go down. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there are like a ton of winter bikes out in Montreal right now. And I don't know why a lot of these are steel bikes. But like I, whenever I'm walking outside, I'm really noticing all of these bikes that are locked up on yeah. the bike parks or the pools or whatever. And like now I'll go up and I'll take a look and I'll be able to appreciate all of the details. And I'm curious about like how the builder chose to do certain things. And I, I just re- recognize things that I wouldn't have seen before because I've actually like had the opportunity to like fabricate them with my very own hands, which is like so cool. That is super neat. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm a little jealous. I'm like, I'm, I'm definitely going to do that at some point. And th- I mean, it's, it's kind of mind blowing too when you think about it. So like you pay the fees to go to the school. And like you live on site, like you, you, there's a room and a kitchen, like room and board and everything. Well, not board, yeah. like you buy your own groceries, but like, yeah. and then you leave and you have your own bike frame. And usually like you'd pay that amount of money just to go and like learn something, but you're like leaving with, and you have your bike too. So it's like the, it's an amazing deal. And it's a, such a cool experience. Like, I think th- th- there aren't very many frame builders who offer no. like building schools or lessons in the entire world. And I know that there are some schools, like there's one in Oregon, there's one in Canada on the West Coast. But so some of them, like they don't let you build a fork. They won't build a fork with you. Others, they don't let you use like all of the tools. Like, oh my gosh, Dave has all of these, like a ton of tools. And I was just like, holy smokes, this guy's sharing all the tools with me. Like I got to play with everything like even the most That's dangerous awesome. stuff ever and he's got like this super old stuff like he has this lathe that was on a navy submarine okay is that easy is that cool? sweet yeah yeah and then he's got like all these like mills and like band grinders belt grinders and like air compressor like powered tools of all sorts and grinders and it's so cool. Like you should see his file collection too. Like, cause we yeah. go filing. I'd imagine. I mean, that's, I might, I'll probably cut this part, but so I've been following this YouTube. I, I, I look at him and go, he's a kid, but like his name is Alex Steele and he does like blacksmithing basically like modern day blacksmithing. Okay, cool. And it's just one of those things that like, I don't know, being in the, the tech world, like I don't, I just type on a computer to make what I make for a living. But like whenever I see things like that, I have such a profound appreciation for it because it's something I don't do. Like I do like to work on my own bikes, but like whenever it comes to that kind of stuff, like you just look at it and you're like, there's so much detail that I know that I'm not seeing and I'm not truly appreciating because I don't know about it. Right. And I think that's probably like one of the big things for me is whenever it comes to like frame building, it's like understanding all of the, why you do things. Cause I'm kind of curious by nature, like why, why would I want to set up the rear strays to be at that angle? Like how does that affect ride and all that stuff? But yeah, it, I don't know. Your frame's pretty sick. So the front fork, what, what did you end up? I, I think I know what you, went with but because i i voted for the arrow one because i like the look of that better than the the one that was like kind of like the bridge it's in my bike bag should i grab it sure yeah okay I'll, I'll make it- 
Okay, so it's been like a week since I got back, and I'm just like unpacking <laughs> all the parts of the frame now. Like I've been super busy. <laughs> but, That's so right. This is the fork that I built, and so I chose the the more kind of slightly more modern fork yeah. crown. On social media, I asked followers to like vote between one that looked more like kind of like an old school like airplane setup. Like there's like two levels in it, and it was a little bit more geometric. I would say with like harsher yeah. like more straight lines and i just thought it looks so cool but it would be tougher to clean and also this one has the angle that i wanted that i needed too since i chose the straight blade and had i chosen the other one i would have had to like i wouldn't have had the choice i would have had to so the, the more traditional kind of steel curve yeah which i kind of like now especially yeah. when i'm like understanding more about like how steel bikes look and what makes them look cool and stuff but i still i really like this it looks a yeah. little bit wider. Oh, one thing that I'm choosing, well, that I that I have to choose now is because I learned that a frame has to be built in consequence, like when you have disc brakes. And it's not just because of you want the mounts, but yeah. it's because like the braking force is like super significant on the frame. So oh. you have to like build the frame to be able to withstand that. So it has to be like really like robust and reinforced. And like if I try to put disc brakes on here, even if I like braze on some mounts correctly it will just like wreck my frame damn <laughs> i never well, knew that you know yeah long live the rim brake then yeah <laughs> yeah well i am a disc brake fan but i'm gonna be yeah. a rim brake fan for my random bike <laughs> i i do like i do like disc brakes i mean i always laugh because like a lot of times whenever i go out on my road bike i it is rim brake right so like a lot of the people will i don't i've noticed like the disc brake people break super late yeah, because like you, you can, yeah. And I'm like, oh, you disc brake people. And everyone turns around I'm like, who's this rim brake guy? And I'm like, oh, hi, how's it going? But I mean, rim brake's cool. I, I think for like just tooling around, I, I think it'll be, I think it'll be pretty sweet. Oh yeah, it's going to be pretty sweet. And yeah. I'll make it pretty sweet for sure. But I'm, I want to do like multi-day events, like or yeah. not events, but rides. Like I want to do a really long ride. Like me, like three days for well for me, like three or four or five days is really really long. So yeah. I'm already kind of imagining that. I just I can't wait to get it all put together so it's an actual bike. No, that'd be super sweet. So is that it's quick release or through axle? Well, I think it's quick release, right? Yeah. What yeah. is I don't even realize that there's a difference. <laughs> oh, 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 through axle. Oh shoot. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. all right. All right. <laughs> no, quick release. Yeah. <laughs> Like I was okay. thinking, like you mean like the old school ones where you like turn on the bolts and stuff, like through on the bolts, no, no through axle. That's no. legit. That's like the OG of of wheels up. But ah, uh, yeah. Sorry, um, I'm thinking OG like that. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> in there, but I don't know if I want to. But no, yeah, it's not through axle. I mean, okay. I didn't even think about through axle. I mean, some of the frames that are made in the carbon building school have the through like are through axle ready, but. I don't know. I don't even know if that was an option. Could have been. I'd imagine through axle is probably a little bit more complex because, like, I I don't oh, know. It it seems more. Have, I don't know if he has the dropouts for that. Yeah, because I guess he'd have to have the correct. Uh... Well, that that actually leads me to my my other question. So, whenever you're putting together the frame, what was the jig like? Was it just the craziest thing you've ever seen, or was there, there were... a jig? There were multiple jigs, actually. So okay. there was a big main frame jig. And, you know, I forget what uh, it's called. You can find it on Dave's Instagram. But he had this, like, brand new one, which is, like, super cool. And then he had, like, one that he's had for a few years, which uh, Nathan used. And I used the brand new one. And, uh, it w like, it was neat. It wasn't super complicated, actually. It's just pretty much to keep the, the tubes in line while you're brazing so yeah. that they don't shift out of place. But there were also, like, there was this rear triangle jig that he used that was, like, pretty rad just to make sure that when you're, like, raising on, like, the um, the chain stays to the bottom bracket that they're, like, that the width is correct. The very other, like, the oh, other. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's I suppose so that's like, something you don't want to mess up. <laughs> or kind of, like, little positioning things that you really don't want to mess up. You're exactly right. So there are like all these little tools and stuff that I would have never thought even existed 
but That's it makes cool. total sense that they do that Dave's got that we we learned how to use. I can't say that I mastered how to use all of them, like, <laughs> but at least I know the gist of it, you know? That's super awesome. Yeah. It, it's been really, it was so cool. Like, I really want to go back. Like, once I get this bike all, like, made up as a bike, I want to go back and I'd love to make another one. And I'm okay. also super curious about what the carbon building school is like, too, and what that experience is like. That should be pretty cool. And someday, so, I want to build a tandem. Yeah, no, I saw... So, I... I whenever you posted, I... I, I crept pretty hard on his, his Instagram and I was like, dude, this guy has some of the sickest tandems I've ever seen. Like he is just super amazing. Like I, I, is his bike collection ridiculous? Yeah. Cause we went on the team <laughs> and like stopped by his house before we continued on our ride. I was like, holy smoke coronies. This is like a bike museum in here. This is like <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Paul, That's Paul Thomas. In, in Tucson and that was my first time like on a no I, w I shouldn't say it was my first time it was my second time on like a tandem ride definitely yeah. my first time doing as long as we did like over 100 kilometers but we had like real good chemistry on the bike okay and it was so cool and he was a great tandem teacher but I shouldn't say but one of the things that he taught me right from the get-go was how to get out of the saddle and so like we could both pedal standing up and like do some efforts like that and carry our speed up over hills and stuff and so I caught on. We he taught me really well, and I caught on pretty quick. And we dialed in our chemistry. But the next day, I wake up and I, I'm heading out for a ride, like to go right up Mount Lemon. And I'm yeah. like, oh shoot, I gotta turn back right away and go get my good like Allen keys because my bike is like messed up. Something's <laughs> like handling all wrong and stuff. I was like, this is dangerous. <laughs> I, I must have like got out of the saddle to try to like do a, a little effort or maybe like I lifted my weight or something to go over like an, an obstacle like a curb or something like that yeah but I realized that it was because like I was still riding as if I was on the tandem and you have to kind of distribute your weight a little bit differently oh. when you're out of the saddle like way way more forward I think it was <laughs> I, I had to, yeah I had to like readjust on my bike and be like oh yeah this is how you ride a bike only after one ride it's not well is it like one of those situations whenever like you have a super heavy backpack on and then you take it off and you still feel like you kind of have that weight back there, but like you don't at the same time? Probably. And but <laughs> you'd be like cripping like forward, like you'd be like almost falling yeah. in your face. Yeah. It That's was like crazy. That. I thought I was gonna crash. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I know my my BMC time machine road is just fine. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. So yeah, the tandems that's I've so I've only done a tandem once. It was like a beach cruiser tandem, but really? the person I was biking with was not really a cyclist, so it was a little bit of a struggle. But yeah, no, I saw I saw the the road tandem, and I was like, damn, that's sweet. But it was everything carbon, like carbon handlebars, even like it was legit. Crazy. And then we were using the Senna helmets too, which was kind of cool. So those are the helmets that I wear that have the integrated communication system. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I could talk to my pilot through the helmet. That's pretty sweet. Point. Yeah. That's really sweet. What else was I going to ask you about it? Sorry. I, I brought up his Instagram page and now I'm distracted. But, oh, the brazing or, or welding, because I know we had talked about that whenever we last we last spoke. And so how did that go? I think whenever we first spoke, you thought it was more welding. And then I guess it looks like it was brazing, which I truthfully don't even know much about. but. Well, when I got to the school, I well, I chose the steel building course over the carbon building course because I really wanted to learn how to weld. I still want yeah. to learn how to weld. And when I got to the course, the school, and I was told that we were not going to be welding anything, I was like, what? I was <laughs> devastated, man. I was like, but this is what I was dreaming about so much. And then because I didn't know what brazing was, like I know what yeah. soldering is, but I don't know what brazing is. So essentially, like brazing is when you use a, a secondary metal to like stick two pieces of the same type of metal together. So okay. I did bronze brazing. So all like the the joints and stuff, all the fillets are made with bronze. There are some parts here that are done with silver, like where I put the the reinforcements under the bosses, and then I think oh yeah, the fork crown is attached to the blades with silver as well. But okay. the rest is bronze and. 
whereas welding is like when you melt two of the initial pieces of metal together. Yeah. So it's like the same, you're using the same metal to stick the metal pieces together. And then soldering is exactly like brazing pretty much, but like at way, way cooler temperatures. Yeah. And then you, when you're brazing, you choose the metal that you're using, like bronze versus different mixes of silver and stuff, depending on like the type, the melting point that you wanted to have. And then the type of reaction you wanted to have. So silver gets like super liquid really fast, whereas bronze okay. has this like really wide range of of heat that it can like withstand. And it will also turn into like more almost like a putty kind of texture. Well, a little bit yeah. like more viscous than that. But okay. that's why it's like good for like these types of areas, like where the head tube and the top tube meet, for example. So that's cool. So is there like, do you also choose it like based on like if there's going to be an area on the bike where there's going to be a, like a lot of tension or something like, like I know you said the fork in the, where the arms meet, is that silver because of like a structural reason or? That's a good reason. Well, so this is where the, the blades meet the crown of the fork. It's pretty much like a lug. Okay. And all the lug brazing is done with silver. And I think it's just because, like, if you try to use bronze, it would be really hard to get the bronze, like, I th to get... Oh, because it'll know, flow in better, I guess, right? The silver flows in better, and then the bronze would, like, build up, and it would be such a pain to file away. Like, a huge pain. Like, the filing and sanding part is really tough. Like, Dave <laughs> says that he's a professional filer. This guy's, like, really good at filing. Okay. That's yeah, cool. I'll have to work a little bit more on the bottom bracket area. I don't know if you can see that, but the bottom <laughs> bracket area is kind of like still a little bit bumpy. And I spent hours like filing that down and sanding Damn. that down. But yeah, it takes a long time. That's super cool, though. I mean, uh, I can't wait to see uh, it, it finished. But are you going to kind of allude to what type of paint scheme you're thinking? So St. Pauli the second the sailboat that i'm yeah. kind of like was thinking about quite a bit when i built this was white with red accents cool. so I, yeah so i want to make it kind of like an off-white like a little bit of a creamyish white with a okay. uh, red with maybe like a bit of an orange tinge to it and then i'd love to have the exact same font that was written on the back of the sailboat on the the down tube here in, and i wanted to say saint paul the third Okay. So we'll see. And then the boat had like a racing stripe type of accent with like a little like type of arrow. So yeah. I loved that on the top tube. But That'd that be cool. Part, we'll see. I guess I have to talk about the that concept to the painter. So we'll see. We'll see what, <laughs> I'm still deciding what, what tubes are going to be red, what tubes are going to be white, uh, what yeah. the ink is going to be. Well, if you need any help with the uh, the font thing, love it. Shoot me an email. Yeah, I'm pretty handy with with Illustrator. So like. If you send me a picture, I can pretty much match it up one to one. So, oh my gosh, I have one picture. You might right. be the man. <laughs> yeah, well, because I was actually, because I'm going to be off the bike for a few weeks, planning as long as my work schedule dies down a little bit. I'm planning on taking apart the bike and everything, and I'm going to send it to a buddy that is. Uh, is a friend that does like powder coating and stuff and I was going to get it repainted. Oh, cool. And uh, so the problem is Le Mans doesn't make that same sticker anymore. He, they have a modern sticker. And so I had to recreate everything. And then I have another friend that has a, a vinyl cutter. Yeah. So I sent the files to them and they printed it out and I have paint layer is kind of built up so it's the Le Monde frame tube badge or frame sticker or down tube sticker but it's designed for like two layer paint so you put it on once you paint over that and then you apply another like overlay to block out certain areas so then you get the base color to come through yeah and I was like it, that opened my eyes a lot to the, kind of the complexity of like paint and how you have to think in layers. And it's just super weird. Cause you're like, 
oh wait, I put this down first if I want it to not be that color. But yeah, it, it was just super weird. And I was like, I'm kind of looking forward to it. And like, whenever they are ready to paint it, I'm like, yeah, I'm coming out. I'm just going to hang out and just creep and watch you guys all day because that seems like the coolest thing ever. Oh, cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. Well, yeah, it, your bike refresh too and it'll be like a brand new bike pretty much. That's exciting. Yeah. Man. Anything else you would you would recommend about Dave's school or Well, if you see if you go on framebuildingschool.com, that's Dave's Frame Building School website, you can see the two course options, so the carbon course and the steel course. And if ever there's like there's no courses available and you really want to do it, send him an email because he might he can open one up possibly. Yeah. yeah. So he doesn't like post them super long or super far in advance. But if you know for sure that you want to do one, just, yeah, sign up. And man, just do it. Like, it's so cool. He has so many interests and so many tools and you can like build so many different things and create like something like that's just your very own. It's really exciting. And then getting to know and meet the other person is quite a lot of fun too. And then you're in Tucson, so if you want to stick around afterwards and just go up and down Mount Lemon a quadrillion times like I did, I just love that. <laughs> or, you know, ride the loop or enjoy the desert. It's pretty cool. So people from all around the world go to this school. Okay. Often it's like it's cheaper for them to go to the school and pay the tuition, which includes like all of the materials and like the board. And then they'll buy their plane ticket and it's still cheaper than doing like some other schools that don't even offer half of what he does. It's it's pretty cool. That's super cool. So aside from obviously coming out of the deal with a bike, what was your kind of favorite experience or what was your like little nuanced moment that you're like, yeah, that that made it worthwhile? Well, definitely the brazing part. Like it was so cool to learn how to braze. Well, I, I guess there are three things that and that's <sighs> normal. Dave says that all the students love the fire. And I did. It was really cool. He didn't give me all the other power tools, like the ones that I was like, this could cut my arm off in the blink of an eye. <laughs> yeah. That was really cool too because I love doing stuff that I'm like not supposed to do because I have this inner child in me that's like, oh, you wouldn't be allowed to do that. I'm like, oh, I get to do this. This is so cool. Like, like hypothetically taking a, a gravel bike off a BMX jump? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I oh, yes, I can. Just watch me in the... <laughs> I hey, watch this. That way. And then, so, the, and the first day that we, like, started using the tools and stuff, I put on my safety glasses, and Dave yeah. told me, oh, those are cool safety glasses, and these are them. And I I was just oh, like, nice. this was so cool, because you know what? You know what I did in the spring? I went to visit my grandmother, and I went into my grandfather's old workshop, and I was, like, looking at his stuff, because, like, as I said before, like, such a cool workshop. And yeah. I... I got some of his old like safety glasses. Aren't like they're old school, right? They're Those so are freaking cool. sweet. And when my frame builder, like <laughs> teacher, when Dave said that, oh, those are cool glasses. I was just like, yes. I was just, it almost brought tears to my eyes. I was like, cool. He appreciates how cool these glasses are. I'm not gonna lie. That just like, so I watched this documentary a couple weeks ago. Like, so I live in Pittsburgh, and like you know, 60, 70 years ago, we were the the hub for steel manufacturing in the U S and I watched this uh, documentary about it. And like those glasses legit, one of the foremen was wearing them. And like, really? you put those on, I was like, Oh my God, those are the glasses from the documentary. I just, I watched. That's cool. Yeah. My grandfather had a bunch of them in his, his workshop. I'm going there for Christmas. So I'm going to go check them out again. I might actually, I'm going to try to make the head badge for my bike too. Like okay. I'm not sure he has a jeweler saw in there. But if he does or did, I'm going to use it. I, I brought home a piece of copper from the frame building school. Okay. And I brought a tube that's like the exact diameter of the head tube. So I'm going to bring this so I can make sure that the curve is correct. And I'll that's try to cool. reduce the anchor and put it on the front in his workshop. So hopefully that works out. And if there That'd isn't. super rad. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that neat? If there isn't, that's I'll just really go cool. back and do it another time. I'll bring my own jeweler saw. I was going to say, there's there's also one of my buddies had a custom head badge made. There's a uh, woman that she's like a jeweler, but all she makes is head badges. Oh, cool. The most amazing thing. I'll, I'll send you the link to it. But Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think Jen head badges or something. I don't know. I'm bad with names. 
Oh, you remembered what she does. That's important. Yeah, well, because it's amazing. Yeah, Jen Green head badges. Here, I'll send you a link. But she makes amazing stuff. Like, she recreated, uh, like, a Moots logo for somebody that just, like, she posted it a couple weeks ago. And I was like, holy crap. Like, that's somehow cooler than the actual Moots head badge. Wow. Yeah. Holy smokes. I'm checking it out now. She's got some really cool stuff. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Cool. But cool. Well, I don't I want to keep you too long, but no, I appreciate you, you talking about it and kind of reliving the experience. Sounds like a really, really cool time. Oh, thanks. I took a bunch of GoPro footage um, and I'm having someone put it all together and compile it into a, a video too. So eventually nice. there's going to be a video of the experience made. But man, if you, if you ever have like the 11 days to go there, I swear, like, you will not regret it. It's like the experience of a lifetime. Sounds it's crazy like a, you can even, like, buy this. Like, you can. Sounds like I need to make 11 days to get out there. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You won't regret it. Sweet. Well, thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you. So.